You know what pisses me off? When people are building something, or people who call themselves out to be woodworkers, and they're doing something, and they're just doing a sloppy job, or it's not the best they can do, they always say, it's just shop furniture. Or, it's just a shop cabinet. Let's put an end to that. Build something that's going to be nice for all time. Because it's more than shop furniture, it's my shop furniture. So this is my hand tool storage. Look, little open frame wire basket. I got all my hand tools in, you got a hand router, you got various other things in here and they always get dusty. So today, we're gonna replace this with a closed cabinet. So this is where many of my shop projects begin. At Lowe's, getting my paneling sawed up small enough to fit in the car. So after I get my panels home, I can cut them to the final size they're supposed to be for the side of my cabinet. Much easier than trying to cut a four by eight sheet of plywood. Okay, here's a tip for you. So this is 48 inches and I want 34 inches. So since my table saw fence will only go up to 24 inches, Basically, I'm going to have to cut the waste off. So basically, I measure out here to 34 inches and realize I have to cut 14 inches off. So typically, when you set your fence to 14 inches, it's cutting on the right side. You have to remember to set your fence to where the 14 inches is cut to the left side of the blade. Here, and you measure from your edge of the fence over here, to the blade is that measures 14 inches on that side of the blade so we're going to slide over a little bit until it says 14 inches on the other side of the blade so have your sawtooth there that says 14 inches on this side that's where we cut to make my Craig jig stable I'm gonna just screw it to my workbench to make it a little easier for temporary, and that way we have this thing nice and firm, won't go anywhere. There we go. So I've marked where all my pocket hole screws are gonna go on each side of my board, and I've done that on all the boards, so when I drill these pocket hole sc screws, be like production, I can just zip right through them. So let's do them now. side done we flip it over do the other three more boards so now screwed in the pocket holes on the bottom or in this case it's actually the back to the side and so we'll have the top here this is a, a piece just holding it square so now we have this we'll let that dry for a little bit undo these clamps and turn around and do the other side so this will be the front of the cabinet over here we'll have my carcass constructed for my cabinet so my base cabinet so this is the side, this is the top, and this is the front. So the next step I'm gonna do is take some nice walnut plywood, put it on this both sides and the top. So we're basically gonna glue that in. So let's do that now. getting this with just a little bit of overhang. Now let's weight this down. Shop cabinet 
paneling, and we'll have five drawers. Here's the lumber I'm going to use to make my drawer fronts. So I've got walnut here, I've got cherry here, I got some mahogany, I have some oak, and I got some very fine crotch maple. So the beauty of all this is these are all the five woods I've used in the last couple of years to build projects. I thought I'd make a little homage to my shop storage cabinet by making the drawer fronts out of these variety of woods. Here I am back at my cabinet and I had some drawer slides that a friend of mine, matter of fact Nathan, when we did Nathan's shelves, gave me these from an old cabinet he took out and threw away and thought I'd try to use them. Matter of fact, I put them on here, measured them out, they were about four inches too short for the whole pull out drawer, but that was okay. But when I put them in here, once they get past the end of the rollers and they start to tilt down, the front gets kind of wonky and it's not straight and it's untidy. So I took those out, took some scrap oak, and I'm going to make my own drawer guide runners out of oak. It'll be a lot better. It's nice and smooth. Let's show you how we do it. So this is what the drawer is going to run on. So it's going to sit on top of here. So we need about a quarter inch spacer. I just took some plywood and made my spacer like that. So we'll put a little glue on that side, shoot a brad nail in to hold it on each side. We'll be good to go. Here's where we are. We got walnut plywood on all three sides and even in the bottom of the drawers we have a little walnut plywood just to add a nice touch. Now for the cabinet. We have all the drawers in. I actually have the tools in here. To trim out the edge here to make this a little bit nicer I've cut some quarter inch thick walnut that's going to go on the edging here and that way we'll have a nice trim out here and we'll make this look a little nicer all the way around. We'll do a bevel on the top and then we'll come back with a router and trip off any excess that we have there. Then we'll be ready to install the drawers. This is my height leveler. And this is the exact height that I'm looking for. I'm getting it centered on the face, left and right. Now I have my screw depth marked as far as the amount of penetration. Now we can drill the holes. These drawers off one eighth of an inch. I know that because I Put a strip in here and then it doesn't rock. So the fix, we're going to take this, glue it in there and raise up our rail one eighth of an inch. You always got to fix something in every project. Here's how I fit the drawers. 
So this is my 1 8, oh it's a heavy 1 8 inch spacer between each of the drawers. So I have this board cut, this piece of walnut, it's exactly 24 inches which is the width of that. I had already pre-measured to know that I have about a quarter of an inch, 3 8 above here for spacing. So I'm going to position this with the edges of the drawer front just on the edges of the cabinet and that lined up there. Pull the back of the drawer. There we go. That's how it work. I've got the inside pre-drilled so I can come in and, and then I'll screw it in. That's a pretty piece of walnut right there. Okay, nicely done. A little small, one eighth reveal at the top. So we got all of our panels in. So the next thing to do is to match up our drawer pulls with the wood, and that would be a cherry. And we have a walnut, a mahogany. So I'm putting this little uh, edge on my drawer ends. So I have the cherry and the mahogany piece cut. Let me show you how we do it. So this is the flat edge of the end of the walnut drawer. I have put piece same thickness up next to it, front and rear, to prevent blowout or tear out on the end. So I'll just cut from here past the board into the backer board. We go nice bevel to install the drawer fronts I made a jig and the jig served a dual purpose it helped me to drill the screw holes in the back of the drawer pulls which are only 3 8 of an inch wide and screw in the holes on the front of the drawers so this jig has a stop at the top and a stop on the right hand side as well as two pieces of wood right in the middle to ensure that each drawer pull is centered for every drawer front. Is these guys have to match up. So we use this jig to drill these holes. Now we're going to use the jig on top of the drawer to drill the holes for the screws. So I drill these until they start to come out this side. Stop. Hey, there we go. One drawer pull, rocking and rolling. There you go, a shop cabinet with cherry, walnut, mahogany, oak, and maple drawer fronts. Got walnut panelings covering on the outside and on the inside of the drawer bottoms. So if you liked our quality shop furniture, be sure to give us a thumbs up. You learned something about that and want to see more of our builds, quality shop builds, consider subscribing down below. And as usual, Come back and see us real soon.
let's put it where it's going to call home. 